So um, welcome. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day during the Basel, Basel Marathon to come and listen to this, uh, this conversation. And uh, today, um, the, my name is Abbasay Mervali, and I'm here joined by Marwan Asaf and Marka Malkadi, who are going to talk about uh, Beirut. And we have some colleagues in the audience. So um, there's, there's plenty of expertise. You know, Ali Khadran from Canvas is here. And we have some members from the Tate Middle Eastern and from v &A. So if you have any questions, there's more than us up here. I want to preface um, this conversation by saying that this is a very focused discussion. And it is not meant to in any way represent the community in Beirut. We're, we have not been chosen as the spokespeople of, of uh, the contemporary art society in, in Beirut, the different entities, the galleries, the non-for-profit spaces, uh, the, the new emerging spaces that are literally opening within the next 24 hours. Rather, it was a, a discussion that arrived as a result of this new focus that has been placed on, on Beirut. Uh, Beirut, like Istanbul, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Doha, Cairo, and other centers, is becoming the hot topic. Museum groups are planning their trips. Curators are now taking even a greater interest in the region and the artists and the, and the local scene. And the, the artists and the, the local talent, the curators and promoters of the art scene, are being courted by the museums and by institutions abroad. As a result of that, we wanted to have a focused discussion as to just a few of the whys. Why, why Beirut? Um, Beirut just hosted a very successful Homeworks uh, 5. And when I spoke to a lot of the colleagues in Beirut to ask their thoughts about this last edition, they certainly became very aware of the presence of the international community, uh, a greater presence. There's always been many members that have been working throughout the years, but there was a greater interest generated. So we wanted to just look at this, uh, these whys. Makram, sitting right next to me, is an architect, and he is, uh, his firm is called LEFT, based out of New York. First time I heard him was in New York at the New Museum, uh, when they were the winners of, 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 uh, of a New York Architectural Prize, which is Emerging, emerging Voices. voices. And, and when I heard his presentation, it became really clear that there's a language uh, that when you speak about your experiences in a region, that so much of it come from the experiences that you live. And it was interesting to me to be able to couch this conversation in those words. Marwan Asaf joins us. He lives in Beirut and um, at times in London. He, um, he is a supporter, he is a collector, and he's a, he's a truly researcher and, and uh, academic. And his, um, his support was very key in, a, in, a, in every way for the creation of BAC that opened the Beirut uh, Art Center that opened ab about a year and a half ago in a physical space. So um, let's start by addressing what is different about Beirut that possibly gives it a different or rather complementary perspective on contemporary art and its production and promotion. And we'll start with you, Marwan. Thank you, Abbasi. I believe uh, Lebanon is interesting because it's different, it's different to other countries. It is an unusual space that juxtaposes incompatible elements, even paradoxical elements. Lebanon is a juxtaposition of party zone and war zone. What do you mean when you say that? Party, party zone and war zone? You know, it's, it has a reputation of having like uh, a great nightlife, a like, great restaurant scene, a place where people go to have fun. Right. And yet it does have, uh, it has suffered the event that everyone here is aware of. The I war. think actually it would be interesting just to, both of you, to touch upon a little bit about that particular political um, historical background, because I don't think it's similar to the other countries in the region, Absolutely. nor... Yes, it's also uh, a juxtaposition of uh, 
war-damaged buildings and cutting-edge architecture. That's a juxtaposition of three languages and cultures in close proximity. That's a juxtaposition of liberalism and traditionalism, juxtaposition of conflicting influences. It is, Lebanon is what Michel Foucault described as a heterotopia. In 1967, Michel Foucault described the heterotopia as a real space that can juxtapose several sites that are in themselves incompatible. This makes Lebanon captivating and special. And this I is, believe. and that's what you believe, Macron. I mean, I want to start by uh, focusing on the question. I mean, when, you, when, when one asks why Beirut is happening now, it, we shouldn't perceive it as kind of a, a belittling of that, the fact that we cannot have our own cultural scene. So we, have, we always had a cultural scene, and now the focus, the Western focus, is, is shifting towards Beirut. So right. it doesn't mean that it didn't exist before. Uh, on one hand, there is something uh, true to what uh, Marwan was saying about this uh, paradoxical juxtaposition of, of differences. Uh, and I think this is probably can be labeled under an identity crisis that the country has always faced, meaning that uh, as a country, its genesis was a constructed uh, uh, formation in that sense. And we're still living in, in that crisis of trying to define what, what is to be Lebanese. You know? And that trickled down at different levels of culture and society and whatnot. Now, I think there's a resurgent in, in, interest in Lebanon. I mean, if you look at the New York Times uh, the, this past year at the CNN Guardian, they all chose Beirut as the main destination for 2010 at one point. So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that, uh, I mean, it's more of a touristic slash commercial interest that is benefiting the art scene in general. Uh, and I think as an art scene is still in its genesis, and you have projects like the Beirut Art Center, like the Beirut Exhibition Center, that are trying to put Beirut on the map, but it's in its early genesis, I think, so it's, uh, it's information. As many of you know, uh, there have been many, many very successful projects that have been ongoing for the last decade and longer in, in Beirut. And, uh, but but the, big, the big change that occurred is the creation of the Beirut Art Center last year, a physical, a physical building that then would in a way host some of the activities. And since then, you know, there is a Homeworks Academy, 98 Weeks has its space. So spaces are emerging, but maybe, maybe the two of you could talk about, and Marwan, since you were in the early discussions mm. before Bach was built mm. uh, or the location was found and mm -hmm. prepared, maybe you could talk about what it means to have had these uh, very substantive and successful projects without any of them having a route, a home, to be able to present the work of the artists yeah. in an ongoing route, w whether that actually fostered more creativity or did it take away from it, and what finally was stable enough for it to be able to finally open a year and a half ago, and then in, within a year, you're looking at images, literally tomorrow this center is going to be inaugurated in Beirut. So within one year, you have a second uh, uh, exhibition space opening for, for art, and that is important. So why don't we start with you right. on that? Okay, I'd like to start by saying that uh, the Beirut Art Center is, a, is more than a physical space. Right. Because it has filled uh, a gap in the cultural discourse. So, uh, by that I mean, it has created debate, it has created, it has created an intellectual debate, it has definitely encouraged creativity, it has provided, it, it has provided the space for emerging artists to show their work and to share it with the public, and the Beirut Art Center organized yearly exhibitions for emer emerging artists to allow them and to allow the public to interact with the art as well as uh, art from abroad. You know, there was, before the Beirut Art Center, there was no dedicated public non-profit comp contemporary art space. Right. So before then, international artists had to uh, go through perhaps commercial venues or like places that are not dedicated to contemporary art. But then now you can have, you can have Kara Walker, but now you can have Chris Marker, you can have, you can have international art, the art of Joseph Boyce. So uh, uh, there's that. Also, the, 
Lebanese artists who enjoy recognition abroad, although they've been exhibited, they've been exhibited right. in Western capitals before the center, there was no place for them to exhibit, to exhibit at home in, in the context that I just mentioned. Why, why did it take so long to build the physical space? The physical space did not take that long after they decided, after Sandra and uh, after Sandra Dagher and Lamia Jvesh decided they, 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 they wanted to, to, to go ahead with it. But uh, so uh, the decision, I mean, let's say that politics or conflict tends somewhat to trump culture or to, to stifle culture. Right. So it's, it's very unfortunately a matter of priority, you know, when you've got the when you live in an environment that's not very stable, it's very unfortunate. The culture I think tends to uh, part of it definitely is this uh, kind of very interesting uh, private uh, initiative that is happening. Okay. And this is, I mean, like now it's, we're seeing it in the art scene, but we've seen it throughout the war. I mean, people have their own generators, they have their own water wells, so they are kind of self-dependent because there's a lack of faith in kind of a centralized government right. because, again, this political cri identity crisis that is happening. Uh, so I think there's a paradigm shift that is happening and that we're seeing now from uh, moving from at one point uh, you have two uh, let's say two parallel views for, for the art, art scene itself one that is more governmental if you want that says we don't need to build these institutions because there is a cultural fatigue right. without necessarily having the fatigue uh, the institution that would produce this fatigue itself so the other is more the private initiative that is saying if we build it, they will come. You know? So you have these two parallel, and I think now the private initiative is taking, taking uh, a stronger push towards manifesting itself in the public domain. Uh, th so what, what, what was considered first as a learned helplessness, that there's nothing to be done, is, is we're going to have a, recurrency, a recur recurrence of war or political uh, dysfunction in the country, has been trumped, I think, by an understanding that the country, if you look at a timeline of the country itself since its independence till now, you would see that 75% of that period from the independence till now was spent uh, in turmoil or in political uh, uh, dysfunction. So m war and political turmoil is the normal condition. And I think people are realizing that you can still function within that uh, background. So we're moving from uh, a kind of a, a risk management, if you want, that perceives risk as a possibilistic threat, meaning that anything can happen anytime, to more of a probabilistic uh, risk assessment, meaning that, okay, something could happen wrong, but we know how to control it, we can work around it, and we can produce, still plant the seeds for future uh, cultural growth. When I was speaking to a lot of the colleagues and, and asking them about about this phenomenon. They felt that what kind of also distinguished Beirut was that the growth has been very responsible. It's been on a steady course and it's been in a way uh, nurtured over the years that it wasn't suddenly a boom and a focus and lots of money that came in and it, and it just exploded. Rather, people have been building on each other's success. And it was interesting that the, that the way everyone was wording uh, was saying, I wouldn't have existed if they hadn't done this work before. If Walid hadn't done this, we wouldn't have done that. There was a, a way of conversing that was very, very communal and very, that, that I have to say, I don't hear as much in the tone in the region. And that to me was very surprising. At the same time, the fear was that with this new perspective, you know, the light being sh shining on Beirut, with the international scene now focusing, that it would somehow maybe change what is so special. How, how do you think uh, this international focus might in a way change? You're on the Tate um, Middle Eastern Acquisitions Committee. How do you see a, an important museum such as the Tate now creating this committee and looking towards Beirut as one of the many yeah. centers in the Middle East? Okay, uh, this, uh, this uh, interest in art from this, that part of the world I think it's, this is only the beginning. We're witnessing the beginning of it, at least in the case of Lebanon. I think the things will shift into a higher gear. Things will keep, where, where things will keep improving. Art, the, the spread of art will keep widening. And um, more and more institutions will follow lead. International institutions will follow lead. 
and would want a close link with the art, with the, with the art production, production center that is Lebanon. But I do believe. you feel it's a dialogue? I mean, sitting uh, on the uh, Tate Committee, do you feel it's a dialogue uh, of a knowledge of wanting to get to know the local community and absorb that knowledge instead of imposing? Uh, 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 yes, there are elements of a dialogue in it, I would say. Yes, there are elements of dialogue in it where there's an exchange of ideas, a play of ideas. So, uh, not only about objects, let's say, ideas. So, uh, yes, that's and it. What, what led to the formation and uh, what led to you as an architectural firm in New York getting the award, being awarded the project? We're very talented this. to begin with. So, <laughs> no, uh, actually this is, uh, I mean, we're collaborating now with Solidaire, which is the firm that is the company that is in charge of the reconstruction of downtown Beirut. And this is the second collaboration that we're doing with them. So we initially were presented to them through uh, the construction of the Beirut Marina that is happening now also parallel and not far away from the exhibition center. So we got to know them. And I mean, this is something interesting in Lebanon, again, because of this political turmoil, a project that could have lasted a couple of years anywhere else in the world lasts a longer period of time in Lebanon because you, you stop it at one point and then you continue it again. So the relationship with the client evolves over a longer period of time and you get to know them on so many levels that you, right. you can start a conversation with them. And what has the process been of, I mean, of doing what is, you all are calling it the Beirut Exhibition Center right. and it's going to be opening tomorrow with an art exhibition. For Nabil Nahas, yeah. Exactly. And so what, what, what does that mean? What does that entree mean onto the, onto the Beirut scene? Um, I mean, if you want to talk from an architectural perspective, yeah. uh, I mean, the project, the, the importance of the project is that it's, it, it's the first design project in the new landfill area of Beirut. So it's kind of uh, uh, claiming a, a, a post or a presence for design in that area. And it's going to be, the, it's a temporary structure, so it's, it's life, shelf, shelf time is uh, eight to ten years probably. Okay. Uh, and it, it, because of that, it became a part of the genesis for the design, how to look at a temporary structure that is internally unstable, meaning that you have temporary exhibitions going on, and externally unstable, meaning that the context around it, now it's empty, but in one year you would start to have growth uh, in the city. So the way we, we did it, we thought of it as an index of this growth, or a placeholder if you want. And uh, the structure is clad with uh, mirrored aluminum on the outside, that would reflect this change that is happening, and become, the city becomes uh, the city is looking at itself through this mirror, and every time you, s you take a snapshot of the building, it will reflect a different context around it. So, it, it is this uh, this uh, uh, unstable equilibrium, if you want, that is interesting for us, and that is reflective of the country as a whole. In general. Um, now, having a new center, and you were saying that there there is a. a a bigger community that are collectors and supporters. Yes. How do you see some of the people that are like you, they're collectors, with new spaces coming on? What is your role as, as a patron, as a supporter of the community? How do you see that evolving and that those of your colleagues in supporting these new initiatives? In this case, it's a private one, but other ones that might need uh, that yes. kind of support, how do you see that evolving? It, it will evolve. I also believe that the pool of uh, patrons will also become larger. Uh, I, think, uh, the, I think definitely the creation of new centers is good news because new patrons will come along with new centers. How did you start? Well, uh, I started, I wanted, I was concerned that there were no, such as I said earlier on, I was concerned that there was no space, there was no equivalent of a public art gallery in the country which is, you know, that the art of the country is not taken too seriously if they don't have a, an important, uh, like some sort of known institution at home. Right. You know, the, so the art remains a bit like, like, like uh, undefined. So you need like an institution at home to ground it and that was totally missing in Lebanon. It did not exist. So I could see the importance of that and I, I, and I could see the ill effects of that, uh, that lack. So this is how I started, I would say. Okay. And as a collector? Well, as a collector, I started collecting in the very early 90s. And I found that there's a, and I, I find that there's a difference between a collection and an accumulation. An accumulation is a gathering, gathering of objects. While a collection, a collection ideally should transcend the objects that it contains 
to reflect ideas and themes. Mm -hmm. So I attempt to collect with a curatorial, curatorial perspective with a view to finding narratives and themes to those objects of art. So and so I've been doing for many years. And do you find that uh, for, uh, for a number of years that not much by you know. By and do you find that in, I mean in Beirut, for example, would you want to support more independent um, exhibition, you know, like curatorial programs? There uh, seem to be a lot of workshops and a lot of educational components, very strong in Beirut. I mean, yes, I'd be pre I, I, would, I would be prepared, yeah. But as I said, there's now a larger pool of patrons. At the time, at the time, perhaps there were not as many as now. Now there's, there are more patrons, you know, with those. The with back those. has a very democratic system. It has a board. Is, yeah. is the Beirut Exhibition Center planning to have a board? And a it's planning to. It's in formation now. And they've booked the space for a whole year with events uh, and exhibitions. Uh, and are all artistic. Exactly, yeah. So there is, um, so there is that movement. How I mean, homeworks showed that uh, the different components of the community really worked well together in showcasing the entire. Do you, do you feel that this is something that can be maintained, that to come together as a, as a one right. to represent? I think the there is still a need for educational programs because more? I think yeah, I think still. I mean, maybe it's a personal uh, feeling, but I mean. I, I still see art in, in Lebanon specifically to be an elite, elitist, if you want, domain. You know? So because the concerns of the general population are somewhere else totally, for good reasons. You know? So we have to, I mean, to find a, a way to show that art could be productive in that uh, it can improve people's life. Not necessarily to have a purpose, per se, but kind of a parallel existence or parallel uh, kind of attribute to, to their existence. Marwan, how do you think? Do you think that? Do you, what do you think about that comment? Do you think that? Uh, well, I, I believe at this stage it is, as Makram said, rather, rather elitist. It tends to remain rather elitist. But I believe the boundaries are being pushed, are being constantly pushed. I mean, Makram, I'm sure Makram's space will push the boundaries further, and then there'll be other things. I'm sure homeworks, homeworks have pushed the boundaries further. They have also addressed. The issue that Maktam just raised, the lack of education, since at the, the, the Homeworks Academy will be providing academic programs, obviously, the academy, they will be providing the programs in art, you know, to educate the people. So it cannot happen overnight. It has to happen in steps. And this, I believe that it is moving in the right direction. How is the dialogue between uh, everyone within the region for getting the greater international perspective, but Beirut as another emerging scene within the region with Dubai, Abu Dhabi, that, that the play. The dialogue. I mean, definitely. Istanbul. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure of any network that exists. I mean, I know the, there's a link that happened recently between our Dubai and Beirut, right, that we, we talked about recently. But uh, in terms of uh, the art scene ha flourishing now in Beirut has something to do with the fact that Dubai is going through a kind of a, a redefinition of its role. It, uh, so it's kind of a temporary reversal of what happened back in, when the civil war in Beirut started, Dubai flourished. And now we're seeing kind of an equilibrium whereby both are going to eventually be at the same position. What will happen with Abu Dhabi coming online? This is exactly, this is still to be seen, I think. Uh, I, I think it's more interesting to see the relationship between Abu Dhabi and Dubai, how that would uh, pan out. You know? I believe Lebanon has relied less on importing art than the countries that you have mentioned. Because of what was existent within the culture throughout and what, its what history. Has, yeah, and what is being produced as an art production center. You know, like it's, uh, um, the speed is accelerating, I think, of art production. Again, the number of artists is increasing, and the number of, uh, the, 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 there are budding curators. That it's just like, uh, and, and it's, uh, uh, there's a number of Lebanese, obviously, who have worked in the art field abroad, and who, have to, who are taking their expertise to the Lebanon now, which is, which is good news, too. But uh, there's less reliance on importing, on importing museums, importing uh, culture. Notions that are existent already outside. Yes, notions or structures that or have structures. existed. Yes. OK. Well, I mean, from the conversations that we were all having with, with a lot of our colleagues in the region, it, it seems that because of the historical um, maturity 
in, in Lebanon. That is why there is a greater focus on the educational aspects and of, of really supporting an infrastructure of growth, which does not seem to exist in others, other centers right now in the region. That focus has not been tremendously pushed in Istanbul, where, where there are many existing museums that, that, that do well or projects, and this, this just separated out. I would like to open it up and do keep in mind that we have some colleagues from other institutions in, in the public that can also help answer any questions that you might have on, um, on what the scene is looking like in Beirut and uh, or our colleagues in Beirut, what they're, what they're bringing to the conversation on the international scene. Hello. My name is yourself. Yeah. My name is Mirna Ayad. Uh, I work for Canvas Magazine. I'm their editor. Um, as a Lebanese citizen, I totally understand what Makram was saying about the Lebanese sort of personality of perseverance. And despite conflict and war, we we get our generators and our wells, and you know we just have to make do with what we have, and that. In the time since Lebanon has become independent, you mentioned 75% of that time was you know, a period of conflict. But in the face of new cultural spaces like the Beirut Art Center or the Beirut Exhibition Center, I understand how you, you can create a sort of homegrown um, cultural appreciation. But even within that conflict, how can you communicate with the outside world. I mean, there has to be a cultural exchange. Lebanon and the Lebanese can handle what to do in conflict situations. But right. when you get exhibitions like Joseph Boys, how can you rest, you know, keep international people assured that yeah. it's all right, <laughs> we can handle this? It, this is, this is, I think, it's a, a massive challenge. The, uh, it's a question for the insurance companies, I think, you know, more. Uh, because we're trying, uh, I mean, I mean, I'm, not, I'm joking, but I'm not also because it's uh, we, we're, we're uh, for the insurance of the Nabil Nahas exhibition. They refuse to insure it beyond a certain point uh, for any Israeli attack or any conflict that would happen. You know, so this is still something that needs to be addressed, I think. But uh, again, I mean, if we go temporarily on hold because of any internal strife or external strife, I think the seed has been planted, and, and it's, it's not that we're starting from zero again. Something has been uh, cultivated, and it will keep on growing. It has, it cannot but grow. Mm. Sorry, I, I, can, please, uh, please. No, and um, just like no, to, to address, I mean, uh, but you know, uh, with regard to Joseph Boyce, I mean, this is just an aspect. You know, what the Beirut Art Center do is that uh, obviously they introduce foreign art to the public in Lebanon, but they also nurture the art that comes from Lebanon. Also, there have been numerous exhibits from you know, Akram Zatari, uh, the, of course, Bernard Khoury, so you're aware, so it's both sides. Introduce foreign art to Lebanon and introduce... No, but, uh, look at but I think, I mean, I think what um, Myrna was saying is, is really valid, but just to give you an example, in Mexico, even though the scene is very developed and there's an amazing museum structure and it's quite sophisticated, um, there are certain artists that are protected patrimony of the country, one of them being Frida. And a few years ago, it was the, it was centenary uh, celebrations and there were going to be several Frida exhibitions moving across the border. And during an election year, still the law is very murky on, on works of art moving. They, depending on what happens with the political outcome, technically you could have a problem. And, and you had like four major museum directors from the United States flying into Mexico City having meetings with, with you know, US representatives there and the community begging for an assurance that the Fridas that were coming into the country would in no way be confiscated should, should something happen the other way. It hasn't happened in history, but the possibility exists. And, and I remember when we were part of the conversation, Diego Rivera the same way, no one could promise it. No one could truly say, 
well, if the elections go this way and the PRD wins, well, you, you know, you're at your own risk because they could possibly take it. But I think it's a real reality for people to feel the confidence to be able to bring in exhibitions um, that, 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 that whether, whether it's the fragility or, or of importance, you need to have centers that are equipped for that, and that is true. But, but it seemed from the conversations more than, you know, we collaborated together last year, but, you know, with Dubai or Abu Dhabi or even Istanbul, there is such a great focus on, on, on educating uh, in Beirut that is heads and shoulders above every other place as far as I can see. And that just signals a greater awareness of what is necessary to sustain it long term without tremendous flow of money. That's another difference that should be pointed out. The millions are not pouring into uh, Beirut as they are in, in some of the other centers. So, um, but that is something for, for people. From, from a, maybe from a museum aspect, how, how, how would, uh, do you want to comment on how you all would look at it, maybe? What, the, over, the, over there. Um, can I ask a different question? What, what Mirna was basically saying, for there to be from the international coming yeah. in. I mean, can, can we just, can I just, um, re can I ask a different question? Because yes. I'm, so, I'm not sure how interesting that kind of technical discussion is. But I mean, because I think Marwan, you talked about the Tate being at the, the beginning of a, a kind of like a organized inf um, institutional interest in Lebanese art. And there is in Lebanon, from an outsider's perspective, a really interesting, nurtured, nascent art scene, which is very, you know, uh, uh, curators, artists, educators working very collaboratively in a very exciting way and generating some really, to my mind, some of the most interesting work from the region is coming from Beirut. How can those artists and those curators sustain this level of engagement in the face of this, you know, burgeoning international interest in the local scene. And is there not a worry that, on your part, that, you know, that the coach trips of curators and institutional collectors will destabilize something that is growing in an organic, step-by-step -step way? I mean, will the supply of good art run out? Well, Sorry, I didn't, hear, I didn't hear the last part, please. Well, will the supply of good art run out? Will the supply of good art run out? Well, I think, uh, I think art catalyzes art. I mean, it's natural. Art, art catalyzes the creation of more art, I believe. Of course, there is bound to be art that's less good than others. I mean, it's a fact of life. I think, but in general, in general, uh, the, the opportunity is bigger than the risk. The opportunity, I think, is bigger than the risk because art will generate the creation of more art, and there'll be a good percentage of good art among them. I, I think, think. Um, when I was talking even this morning to Sandra, who's a, one of the co-directors of BAC, she she felt that because the growth has been so steady and organic, but in a way measured, that they feel that they're very ready for this onslaught, and and that they th that for them it is very important to recognize that it didn't happen overnight, that there was a pouring of money, but it tremendously when you listen to the amount of sources that they have to apply to to get funding to put on just one exhibition, that even in 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 the museums, you don't have that many people doing grant writing. And that, that is really a kind of a dedication that, that is unique, that you don't see it mirrored. But, but a lot of the colleagues felt that, that, that the way they had done it, because it's been slow and steady, that they were very ready for, for, the, for the onslaught. With, with artistic, that was different. The artists seemed to feel that, as we discussed a year ago, actually, with the Canvas panel, that art is a reflection of what you're living. And 
the conflict that has been lived is, is what is being manifested a lot in many artists' works. And as they come and start living different experiences, th therefore the art is going to be um, reflecting that. Um, and, uh, but, but the tone was very, very hopeful. How, how, what do you all think? Just a comment, yeah, Ali. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ali Kadra, founder of Canvas Magazine. And I'd like to thank you for bringing the Beirut topic into Basel. This is very important for us. And not only because I'm Lebanese, but also because I believe there's a very thriving art scene in Lebanon. It just needs to be tapped into. I believe, and I may be wrong by saying that, but I think the diaspora money should be poured into Lebanon, more than money from Lebanon into Lebanon. Lebanese people are so, you know, intensely, intensely um, uh, busy in the conflicts that are available inside Lebanon. What we need really, because the scene is there, the interest is there in my opinion, what we need is all the very wealthy and art savvy diaspora money poured into Lebanon. So I think we need a very important marketing machine outside Lebanon to market the art scene in Lebanon. If there should be an art scene in the Middle East today, I think a Biennale should be happening in Lebanon, an art fair should be happening in Lebanon, primarily and then elsewhere because we have the infrastructure and we have the interest. Same thing I would say to people from Tehran, for example, because the infrastructure is there, the interest is there. Same thing as Cairo. Before anywhere else in the Middle East, I think these three cities are more receptive, receptive to the contemporary art scene than any other city in the Middle East. I may be shooting myself in the foot by saying that, but it's so true. But how many, it's how a fact. many biennales can you have in the Middle East? You can have two, three biennales in the Middle East. I think there is sustainability of art and there's constant creativity, in my opinion. I mean, the art supply, good art supply will not stop if there's good funding and if there's good support from patrons. We lack patrons in the Middle East. This is one of our major issues, in my opinion. Once we have strong patrons and patrons from abroad helping the Middle East also, this will thrive and this will generate better and better art. I think, I mean, I completely agree with you. I think when you look at how successful Homeworks was in the way they did between all the different exhibitions and the talks, I think, you know, um, this fair is very successful for many reasons. It's, it's commitment to, you know, quality, I think, is the number one. But I think we, we have an ability to maybe redefine the concept of a Biennale or even a fair and do something totally new. Um, you know, in New York, Independent was very successful, but I think there is a space for, for Beirut to host something that is completely new and different from the existing structures. Huge space, huge, huge space. I believe so. Thank you. Thank you. W one more question, so. My name is Christian Berndes, and I'm curator and head of collections of the Van Abbe Museum in Eindhoven. I just wanted to comment on uh, the question you asked, how museums deal with uh, lending their works to the, uh, this region. We recently started a project uh, to lend a work of Picasso from our collection to Ramallah, to the Art Academy there. And it was a request of the director of the academy who asked us to give a, the work on loan for a project there. We see it uh, as an um, experiment to uh, investigate uh, the possibilities of lending works to this uh, area. And we think it's very, very important to start an exchange to bring works from the West there and bring works from there to here. And we are willing to take this risk because we think it's important to start um, an, a, an, an, a discourse. So that's Thank you. my comment. Thank you. Um, I would like on behalf of all of us to thank you for um, your presence and to just say that this was Art Basel's way of introducing Beirut onto the scene and there will be many more panels and workshops in the future that will have uh, talented colleagues from, from Beirut and from the region. We want to wish you well tomorrow on your inauguration and hope that the Beirut Exhibition Center does really well. 
and to thank you and supporting the community and collecting and I'm sure the fair awaits you anxiously. Um, thank you so much for thank coming you. and uh, there are more great conversations till Sunday I believe so. Thank you.